Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. In our continuing effort to bring you the best of steampunk, we're going to talk about one of my favorites, one of my favorite steampunk novels of all time, which I mentioned briefly in my top 10 episode a few weeks ago. Now, there's a story behind this. Uh, a couple years ago, I was at a local convention here in Phoenix, uh, sitting at a table with a bunch of other writers, and we noticed a lady come by wearing this really striking outfit. It was like a Victorian type gown, very beautiful, but it had these bold black and white stripes, which is something you wouldn't expect from that era. And, and so we had to ask her, why, what is that costume? Does that represent something? And she said it was from, from a book called The Night Circus. That sounded pretty fascinating, so I immediately went and looked it up by a writer called Erin Morgenstern. <clears throat> she published it back in 2011. I read it and it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I also heard that it was had been optioned to become a movie at, shortly after it was shortly after it was um, published in, in 2012 because it was it had received a lot of acclaim and, and a lot of critical notice so I was excited to hear about that. Unfortunately that that languished for quite some time. The Night Circus is essentially a Victorian era fantasy that that takes place in the real world with these magical steampunk elements. And there are elements of mystery, romance, magic, and art in this book. It's got it's got it all. What's more, what's most interesting is that it was Aaron Morgenstern's first novel. That's pretty amazing. You can go go and produce a first novel like that that, that gets so much, so much uh, laudatory praise. Now, the Night Circus, the titular Night Circus, is, is actually called the Circus of Dreams. And it's this mysterious troupe of performers. Uh, they appear with their tents, their black and white striped tents. They appear in random towns uh, from different locations in different countries in the world, mostly Europe and America. And the circus is only open from dusk till dawn. And uh, the colors are dominated with black and white. Kind of interesting. The circuses are, you know, usually supposed to be colorful. But regardless, it's got the most amazing performances, feats of of acrobatics and magic and so on that are just just unbelievable and people just are astounded and they they want from one tent to another seeing these wonderful performances and people just keep coming back because it's so amazing and wonderful and then all of a sudden the circus disappears you know one one day they come one night they come back and it's gone and it's gone off someplace else one of the most interesting aspects of the circus and what made me consider it to be totally steampunk is there's this amazing clock that sits at the entrance of the circus and, it, and it's all got all these gears and and all these uh, other mechanical parts in it and it transforms itself it morphs into different shapes and so on during the day and it was made by a master clockmaker from Germany the protagonists of this of this novel are, well, there's many characters, but the two main protagonists are start out as children. One is Celia Bowen. She's the daughter of Prospero, who is a traveling stage musician, magician, who has, who actual, has actual powers. I mean, he's considers, he considers himself kind of a, kind of a fraud because he's pretending to have, pretending to be a, a, a standard uh, prestidigitator who's just just fooling people, but in reality he has real magical powers. And his his um, former mentor and now rival is a mysterious dude called Mr. A.H. And he's got this power that makes everybody else forget him. He, they can't even remember his face. And he adopts this child called Marco, Marco Alice Dare, and who also has magical powers. And so they have this ongoing rivalry. The two are supposed to settle some kind of long-going bet, years that happens for years and years, and you get the feeling that they're supposed to kill one another, that the victor is victor of either Marco or Celia is supposed to kill the other, but of course, of 
course, this being a romantic kind of novel from the Victorian times, of course they fall in love, <laughs> which gives, has a lot of other complications to it. Now, the circus itself is, is very, very cool. It's got all these different oddball characters. There's people who uh, financially support it, and there's also people who, who perform in it, and they have this kind of a weird longevity that's, that's like done by magic. And the story itself kind of jumps back and forth to the origins, back to when Celia and Marco were children, and uh, as time progresses, you know, as the, the modern timeline is moving forward, as the circus is, keeps traveling and encountering difficulties, and in the past when the circus was first being invented, when, it, when they were brainstorming and, and different people came forth to, to support this effort. And so, yet it doesn't become too complex to follow. I mean, it always held my interest very much, and I was very, very invested in these characters and really, really grew to love these people. I was really, really sad to see it end. And most of all, the most upsetting thing is all is that I don't know if I could ever, as a writer, create anything so wonderful and beautiful as this story. It really is cool. Now, I suppose with all the romantic ep ep elements that it may be more of a uh, draw for women, but I think men will enjoy this too. Two things, two great things that happened really recently. The first is that although Morgenstern wrote this novel back in 2011, she hadn't produced anything since then. It was very sad. But this year, this very month, she has released her second novel, The Starless Sea, which is another fantasy novel. Kind of an interesting premise. I think it's this kind of underground world, I think, is what it is. And I'm going to read it as soon as, uh, you know, as soon as I get it. <laughs> and the other fascinating thing is I heard earlier this year that they had finally started production on the long-awaited Night Circus movie, that Lionsgate was creating this, <clears throat> and that there was no release date. Uh, re release date known as of yet, and you know with the Movie Insider, which is the where I saw this, they didn't have any anything about who the actor was going to be and so on. They mentioned a director I hadn't heard of, and anyway, I'm very excited. I hope that comes out soon. I think it's a sign that steampunk is coming back, and that this this movie I think will be a will be spectacular, assuming that it's well done and not kind of a miss like like the unfortunate Golden Compass, I think, it, I think it will be a blockbuster. So as far as the book goes, I would give it, again, my highest rating of 5 out of 5 gears because it is amazing, it is absorbing, it is wonderful. Read it. Absolutely read it. So that is my review of The Night Circus by Aaron Morkenstern. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of this review. Please come back again and see us sometime. Like and share this review. And for now, this is Vaughn Troy, the Steampunk Desperado, saying, Adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.